Let us open our Bibles this morning, beloved. Let's get, let's get going here to Acts chapter 5. The Holy Spirit, his purpose, who or what is the Holy Spirit? This is the first question we're going to answer together this morning. Acts chapter 5 and verse 1. Acts the fifth chapter and verse 1. Acts the fifth chapter and verse 1. Who or what is the Holy Spirit? Question. A lot of people have this question. But a certain man named Ananias with Sapphira, his wife, sold a possession and kept back a part of the money but told the church they had sold it for more or less than they had, and his wife also being privy to it, and brought a certain part and laid it at the apostles' feet. They lied about how much they sold it for and how much they kept, etc. But Peter said, Ananias, why hath Satan filled thine heart to lie? When you lie, friends, it is Satan filling your heart to lie, beloved. It is Satan. Okay, it is Satan. It is Satan. Liars are filled with the spirit of Satan. Thank you to all my moderators this morning. So glad you're here. Do not be afraid to moderate. May the Lord guide you accordingly. Amen. And he says, Satan has filled thine heart to lie to the Holy Ghost. My Bible says lie to the Holy Ghost. King James, lie to the Holy Ghost and to keep back a part of the price of the land. Verse 4. Thou hast not lied unto men, but unto God. Friends, did you see that? Verse 3 says they lied to the Holy Ghost, that Ananias lied to the Holy Ghost. Verse 4 says he lied to God. He lied to God, friends. He lied to God. When he lied to the Holy Ghost, he lied to God. Thank you for the follows this morning. John chapter 16, come on with me. We're answering the question, who or what is the Holy Spirit? In John chapter 7, 16, pardon me, John chapter 16, verse 7. John the 16th chapter and verse 7. And remember, these recordings, the playbacks will be available over on YouTube. The playbacks will be available over on YouTube. Okay? So if you're driving to work, if you don't have any opportunity to write these things down, no, you can go back and watch the playback on YouTube. Okay, wants to play it back on YouTube. Remember, friends? Nevertheless, verse 7. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth, Jesus said. It is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the Comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send, what does your Bible say? My Bible says him. I will send him. I will send him unto you. And when he is come, when who? When he is come, he will reprove the world of sin of righteousness and of judgment. How be it when he, the spirit, when he, the spirit of truth is come, he will guide you into all truth for he shall not speak of himself. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. He shall glorify me, for he shall receive of mine and shall show it unto you. All things that the Father hath are mine. Therefore said I that he shall take of mine and show it unto you. John chapter 4 and verse 24. John chapter 4 and verse 24. Look at that. User 594 getting ahead of me in my notes. Praise God. <laughs> We're in John chapter 4 and verse 24. Isn't that interesting? Praise the Holy Ghost. God is a spirit, my Bible tells me. Okay, friends, let's recap. 
Acts chapter 5, verses 1 through 4, John chapter 16, verses 7 through 15, and John chapter 4, verse 24, we have just learned what? The Holy Spirit is God. The Holy Spirit is a person. And he is a spirit, obviously. God is a spirit. God is the Holy Spirit. And God, the Holy Spirit, is a person. That's what the Bible just said to us, friends. That's not what Brother Gordon has said to you. That's not what I believe because I think that. We read it directly from the scriptures together. He, him, himself, person. He can be grieved. Come on. He, I don't want to get ahead of myself. I want to submit to the chat this morning. I want to submit to the chat this morning. That ghost, poltergeist, haunting of houses are the counterfeit. Nothing more than fallen angels impersonating the work of the spirit or spirits. Okay, the spirits. Good morning to all my friends over on YouTube. Know that we also live again now on TikTok as I speak to you this morning. What did I say? Haunted houses, poltergeists. Some of us are from the world. You, you remember those movies, don't you? Some of us studying poltergeists and all that, watching poltergeists. Okay. <laughs> Shout out to all my moderators this morning. Thank you for doing what you do. This is the counterfeit, friends. Fallen angels. Fallen angels. Come on. Fallen angels doing the work of the devil. Doing the work of the devil. Come on. Doing the work of the devil. Teardrop, good morning to you. There's the real spirit of God, the spirit which is God, and then Satan has the counterfeits, the movies, the Hollywood, the poltergeists, things flying around your home, seeing shadows and spirits, supposedly. This is nothing more than fallen angels impersonating the true. Fallen angels impersonating the true. Daniel chapter 7, verse 9. I want to submit to the chat this morning that the Holy Ghost is God. The Holy Ghost is a person per the Bible. The Holy Ghost is spirit, but he is the third person of the Godhead. What did I say? He is the third person of the Godhead. The Elohim consists of three separate persons. Let me show you what I mean. In Daniel chapter 7, verse 9, they all have separate forms. They are separate persons per the Bible, not per what I think. Daniel 7 verse 9, I beheld, Daniel said, till thrones were cast down, and the Ancient of Days did sit. Who is the Ancient of Days? Chat this morning. Who is the Ancient of Days in Daniel 7 verse 9? Where are my students of Bible prophecy at? Where are my students of the Bible at? What, what, who is the Ancient of Days in Daniel 7 verse 9? Amen? The Father, Will, it's not Jesus. And I'm going to show you, brother, but good, good attempt It is the father. It is the father. We're teaching the Bible here this morning, friends. If you don't know the Bible, it's going to be confusing to you. I don't know what to tell you. You can sit and learn. I pray. Verse, Daniel 7, verse 9, the Bible is going to tell us, friends, the Bible is the, the thing that we can stand on with surety. So many people are in darkness and ignorance because they reject the Bible. The ancient, the ancient of days did sit. That's the Father. That's God the Father. Now, look what it says here, friends. He had a garment on that was white as snow. He had hair of his, he had a head. He had hair like pure wool. He sat on the throne. Does God the Father have a body? Yes or no, friends? Per the Bible. I don't want any personal opinions. Per the Bible, Daniel 7, verse 9, does God the Father have a body, have a form? Does he have a head? Does he have hair? Does he sit? Yes or no? Amen, friends. We've got to stop the foolishness. Amen. 
People don't want to read the Bible. Now go to verse 13. You are going to see now the son with a separate personage, with a separate form, with a separate body. Look what it says here. I saw in the night visions and behold, one like the son of man. Who is the son of man in verse 13? Come on. Who? That's a yes to my, to my YouTubers over here. That's a yes. He has a body. Yes, absolutely. That's Jesus. Amen. So verse 13 is Jesus, the son of man. I saw in the night vision, Daniel says, and behold, one like the son of man came with the clouds of heaven, the angels, and came to the ancient of days, and they brought him near before him. There's God the Father. There's God the Son. Boom, being brought near each other. Amen? Amen? Come on, friends. God the Father has a form sitting on a throne, head, hair, whole deal. Then Jesus, God, comes to him. They're there, the Elohim. Jesus said in John chapter 8, verse 58. Friends, if you don't believe the Bible, you're, you're, you're in darkness. Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, before Abraham was, I am. He took... He called himself God outright. I am. If Jesus was just a man, if Jesus was just a prophet, how is it possible to anyone in my life this morning who believes that Jesus was just a prophet, just an earthly man, how could he exist before Abraham? The Jews understood what he was saying, which is why they took up stones to stone him because he was bla it's blasphemy to call yourself God if you're a man. A.K.A. the Pope. Let's get it together, friends. Act like we know what's going on in this world. Vatican City, headed by the Roman Catholic Papacy, visiting the United States of America, visiting Congress, visiting the United Nations, speaking to all the world, speaking to all the globalists. And Protestants don't have a problem with that. All roads lead to Rome. I am. He always was, always will be. He is the self-existent one. He has life in him, underived and unborrowed. Jesus Christ, Yahshua, Joshua, Emmanuel, has life in himself, unborrowed, underived. Hmm? He said, I am. I am. The Holy Ghost is a person, he is God, and he is the third person of the triune Godhead, per the Bible, not per my thoughts or opinions, not per any pagan tradition or idea, not per the Roman Catholic Church, per the Bible. We just read it with our own eyes, heard it with our own ears from the King James Version of the Bible. Go back and watch it again, friends. What is the role and work of the Holy Ghost? We're speaking about the Holy Spirit this morning and his purpose. What is his role and work? John chapter 16, verse 8. And when he is come, he will reprove. He, he will reprove. That word reprove means to convict, to convince. I'm here to let every Christian know this morning, you are not the Holy Ghost. Your role is not to convince or convict. That is the work of the Holy Ghost. And he is to convict, the Holy Spirit is to convict the world of sin. What is sin, friends? 1 John chapter 3, verse 4. For sin is the transgression of the law, friends. Mm-hmm. Come on. Sin is the transgression of the law. If you are breaking the Ten Commandments, you are sinning. If you are not loving God with all your heart, mind, and soul, you are sinning. If you don't love your neighbor as yourself, you are sinning. Sin is the transgression of the moral law of God. There's only one law that I know that God gave that he spoke with his own mouth and wrote with his own finger. The Ten Commandments, beloved, the moral law of God, which is the foundation of his throne in heaven. Understand the sanctuary service, which is the foundation of his throne in heaven. Come on. Foundation of his throne in heaven. Thank you to all my moderators here this morning. 
Thank you for the work that you do. Come on. To convict of righteousness. What does that mean, friends? Jesus is our righteousness. The Lord, our righteousness. All caps. Righteousness is right doing. You and I have no right doing of our own. You and I have no right doing of our own. We are seen perfect in the eyes of the Father. We have seen to live a perfect life because we take on Christ's righteousness. The perfect life that he lived, all the right doing that Jesus did covers ours. We don't have any. So the Holy Ghost convicts us that we have no right doing of our own and that we need the righteousness of Jesus. The Holy Spirit convicts us that we are sinners. We have transgressed the law of God. We have fallen short of the glory of God. We have broken the Ten Commandments. Then he convicts us of judgment. Revelation 14, verse 7. Do, is, oh, friends, do we know that we are in the hour of God's judgment? Revelation 14, verse 7. This is the work of the Holy Ghost in Revelation, last book of the Bible, chapter 14, and verse 7. It says, saying with a loud voice, fear God, which means to live apart from sin. Fearing God means to live apart from sin. Exodus 20, verse 20. Fear God and give glory to him, uh -huh, for the hour of his judgment is come, not has come not will come, is come, and worship him that made heaven, the earth, the sea, and the fountains of water. Worship Yahweh, worship Jehovah as the creator. Keep the seventh day Sabbath holy, friends. Let's give it to you plain this morning. Let's, give you, let's get right to it this morning. This is the work of the Holy Ghost to convict of sin, righteousness, and judgment. John 16 in verse 13, what is the work of the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit? How be it when he, the spirit of truth, comes? Listen, friends, if anyone is believing or teaching a lie, they are not filled with the Holy Ghost. They are filled with Satan. If the Holy Ghost, if the Holy Spirit is the spirit of truth, then what is a lie, friends? What is a lie, friends? Uh-huh. If, if, the, if the Spirit of God, if the, spirit, the third person of the Godhead is the Spirit of truth, then when, when, when we hear a lie, it comes from the devil. So I don't, if you have a, the book of, listen friends, any text you may be reading that is teaching opposite and contrary to the Word of God is a lie. Hmm. Hmm. How be it when he, the Spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth. Friends, when people don't receive the truth, they're not being led by the Holy Ghost. When you read the Bible and it plainly says, talks to you plainly, keep my commandments, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy, don't love your neighbors, and you see that and reject that truth, you are now being led by the spirit of the devil. Because the spirit of God leads and guides you into all truth, not some truth, not a few truth, no, no, all truth. For he shall not speak of himself. Now, everyone listen to these friends. Sometimes we want to elevate the Holy Ghost. We want to start to expound upon the Holy Ghost more than what the Bible says. But here's the thing about the Holy Spirit. He doesn't speak about himself. When he comes, he comes to do what? He will not speak about himself. He comes to glorify the Son. You're going to see. But whosoever he sh but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. The Holy Ghost will lead you into all truth. The Holy Ghost will reveal to us future events. Those who reject the prophesying, those who reject the interpretation of prophecy, those who reject what the Bible teaches about future events, they are rejecting the Holy Ghost. In Revelation 13, there are two beast powers mentioned. Let me just be plain with you this morning, friends. In Revelation 13, there are two beast powers mentioned. A beast is a symbol of a king or political power in the Bible. Daniel 7, verse 17, and Daniel 7, verse 23. The first beast power in Revelation 13 is the Roman Catholic papacy. Vatican City, headed by the Roman Catholic, pap Roman Catholic papacy. The little horn power. The mother of harlots. The abomination of the earth. Mystery Babylon the Great. The second power that comes up behind her is a power with lamb-like horns that comes up in the 1700s. Mm -hmm. Does not come up through war and strife. Does not come up in a highly populated area, but speaks as a dragon. This power is the United States of America being led by the harlot daughters or false Christianity. Now, 
If that revelation is true, if that revelation is accurate and you reject that revelation, you reject that interpretation and it's the truth and it's from the Holy Ghost, then you are rejecting the spirit of God. Does that make sense, friends? Verse 14, the Holy Ghost, he will glorify me, Jesus said. So the Holy Ghost will glorify Yeshua. He will uplift Jesus. Amen. He will uplift Christ. He will not uplift himself. The Holy Spirit will not come and talk about the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will not come and speak about the Holy Spirit. He's going to come and up glorify, magnify Jesus. For he shall receive of mine, he shall show it unto you. Whatever he receives from the Godhead, he's going to give to, his, to us. Hmm. He will take of mine and show it unto you, verse 15. John 14, verse 26 now. In John 14, verse 26, we find these words. But the comforter, do you need comfort, friends? Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Do you need comfort, friend? Lonely? But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things. He's a what? Teacher? He shall teach you all things. And then for everybody who has a bad memory here, come on. Anybody struggle with remembering things? Don't you worry. And he will bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. So when you read your Bible, friends... When you read your Bible, friends, and you can't remember the Holy Ghost, let's, com let's cover what he does. Let's cover the work of the Holy Spirit. He convicts of sin. He convicts of righteousness. He convicts of judgment. He leads us into all truth. He reveals to us future events, prophecy. Before they happen, he reveals to us what's going to happen in the future. Daniel and Revelation, go over to YouTube, backslash, go stand and preach dot, or dot com, dot, go stand and preach dot com. All right. YouTube, backslash, go stand and preach. I'm going over the prophecies there with you, friends. Pillars of prophecy. Keeping the end in mind. These are series that we put on at Ghost and Preach for you to be able to know what's going to happen in the future as revealed in the Bible, friends. He convicts of sin, righteousness, and judgment, the Holy Spirit. He leads us into all truth, not some truth, all truth. He reveals future events to us, the prophecies. He glorifies and magnifies Yeshua. He gives us communications or revelations from the Godhead. I said the Holy Ghost gives the church communications and revelations from the Godhead. He is a teacher. He is the teacher. He, he is the agent that will bring the words of God, the words of Jesus back to our minds. Additionally, go to, go to John chapter 14 and verse 15. <clears throat> Additionally, go to John chapter 14 and verse 15. <clears throat> For all of those who don't know that there is, <laughs> that the Godhead is three, that, God, that the Elohim is three, go back and watch the beginning of this video on YouTube. If you came in late, you missed it. And if you were here and you heard it and you're disagreeing with it, I'm praying for you because we read it from the Bible, friends. Amen? We don't care about your personal opinions. We don't care what pagans teach and believe. We care what the Bible teaches and believes. Amen? For John 14 and verse 15. Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments. Mm-hmm. Amen. Did he say argue about the nature of God? No, no, no. He says, if you love me, keep my commandments. Come on. If you love me, keep my commandments. Are, are you keeping his commandments, friends? <laughs> are we keeping his commandments? And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. Hallelujah, friends. You and I should never feel alone. Did you hear what I said to you, friends? You and I should never feel alone. Why? Because the comforter will abide with us forever. 
Come on. The comforter shall abide with us forever. Amen. Uh, K. Foss, are you keeping the fourth commandment? I sure am. I don't know if you are. <laughs> I sure am. <laughs> Seventh day of the week. Amen, beloved? Not the first day of the week. Let's get to it. And I will pray the Father, and he will give you another comforter that ye may abide with you forever. You shall and I shall never be alone. Even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive. Why cannot the world receive the spirit of God, the spirit of truth? Listen, friends, if the world is not receiving the spirit of truth, that means the world is receiving the spirit of error. There's only two sides, friends. Either you know the truth or you're in error. Either you're in the remnant church of God or you're in Babylon. Let's, let's, let's cut all the nonsense out. Let's, 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 let's not be politically correct this morning. If you are not, come on, come on. If you have not received the spirit of truth, then you have received the spirit of error, the spirit of lies. Even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him. But ye know him, for he dwelleth in you and shall be in you. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. Hold on. You're telling me that the spirit of God dwells in me? The indwelling spirit? Let's break this down practically, friends. I want to give you five practical statements about this, about the spirit of God dwelling in us. I'm going to give you 12 practical statements about the Holy Ghost dwelling in us. Thank you for the gifts this morning. Thank you, Nurse B. Thank you, Sean. Thank you, Nene. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, beloved, so much. Sean Lee, thank you. Goanna, thank you. Positive Vibes, thank you this morning. Come on, beloved. I want to make 12 statements. 12 practical statements about what it means when we read the Holy Ghost is in us and dwelling in us. You see, brethren, if we were all filled with the Holy Ghost, if we were all in tune with the Spirit of God, there would be more agreement on truth in the Bible. Come on, does that make sense? If we, all, if, if we were all filled with the Holy Ghost, which is the Spirit of truth, why we not believe the same thing about the Bible? That means one of us, some of us are believing a lie and are not filled with the Spirit of God. Come on, think, just do this logically. If I'm filled with the Spirit of truth and your spirit, you're filled with the Spirit of truth, why would we not come to the same understanding on a passage of text in the Scriptures? You can think of the Holy Spirit as the breath of spiritual life in the soul, the mind, the being, the person. You can think of the Holy Spirit as the breath of spiritual life in the person. The impartation of the Spirit is the impartation of the life of Christ. That's the second statement I want to give you. Practical statement. The impartation of the Holy Spirit to you and I, in all actuality, is the impartation of the life of Christ into the believer. Hmm. The Holy Spirit imbues the receiver with the attributes of Christ. Those who receive the Spirit of God, friends, you then receive the attributes of Christ. You become like Jesus. What did John the Baptist say? I must decrease and he must increase in me. Those who receive the spirit of God become more like Jesus. Come on, friends. Oh, God, be with the ignorant this morning. Mm. The Holy Spirit gives us, imparts to us the attributes of Christ. In order to be filled with the Holy Spirit, the vessel of mercy must be emptied of self. Now let's talk, beloved. The only way you can fill a cup is if the cup is empty. Hmm? If I want to fill a cup that has oil in it, or that has some, I need to empty the cup, right? Or let's say a cup is filled with rice. 
I had to empty the cup out of the rice and then fill it with the water. Okay? So, if you're full of self, like many people are, beloved, and let me tell you something, we can tell by your, by, by your on, on this live, we can tell by your comments, how you, how you enter into the chat, the things you say, filled up with self. When you're filled with self, you cannot be filled with the Holy Ghost. Come on, friends. If you want to receive the Holy Ghost, self must be emptied. The Holy Spirit will only enter the heart that does not boast of self and is not puffed up with pride and lust and vanity. Hmm? Pontificating. Where self is God and you say, no, the word of God is not right. What I think is right. Holy Ghost is not there, friends. <laughs> Holy Ghost can't dwell in that temple. Holy Ghost can't dwell in that mind. Holy Ghost can't dwell in that heart. Come on, I'm trying to make it plain and practical for you this morning. The Holy Spirit will only enter the heart that does not boast of self and is not puffed up with pride. The love of Christ, the love of Jesus, will fill the vacuum that is made by the emptying out of self, friends. When you're empty, the love of Christ it's the Holy Ghost. It will fill the vacuum. Listen, friends, how could a person be filled with the Spirit of God but be unloving, bitter? People are getting this live sometimes on TikTok's hilarious. People hop in here thinking they have the truth. I, I, have, great, I, I have greater knowledge. I have greater light than you. Ha, 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 ha. Your fairy tales, your fantasies. I have the light, but you, your character is terrible. You're rude, nasty, impolite inconsiderate, unempathetic, and you, and you have truth? You have truth? Rude people have truth? Emotionally unintelligent people have the truth? Condescending people have the truth? Arrogant, bitter people have the truth? Unforgiving people have the truth? Boy, boy, boy. The deception is thick on TikTok, let me tell you. Thick online and social media platforms. Thick. <sighs> May God give you eyes to see, give you ears to hear, and a heart that is soft to receive the truth, friends. I'm not talking about intellectually. Mm that you might receive the truth in the inner sanctum of the soul, in the most holy place of the mind, that your wretched self will be converted and you will stop being so selfish, mean, and nasty. That you would love God with all your heart, mind, and soul and love thy neighbor as thyself. Can I talk to him this morning, please? Hmm. I don't want any truth that's made you like that, friends. Anybody, any atheist, agnostic, Christian, if you have a truth, you think you have the truth and it's, it's making you nasty, I don't want it. Keep it, please. I don't need it in my life. It is through the spirit that Christ dwells in us. I repeat, it is through the spirit that Christ dwells in us and the spirit of God received into the heart by faith. The Spirit of God is received into the heart by faith. This is the beginning of eternal life, friends. When we receive the Holy Ghost by faith, we are receiving Christ in us. Come on. Come on. Come on. Every. How many people have fallen short of the glory of God, friends? How many? A few? Or has every, has every person fallen short of the glory of God? Come on. The problem is we're unwilling to repent and humble ourselves, be corrected, receive correction from the Spirit of God, receive reproof, we, we want to we want to stay. We, we justify our actions. This is, this is why our marriages fall apart. This is why people can't stay in relationships. 
because you always think you're right about everything. You're uncompromising, you know it all. This is why no one likes you. No one wants to hang out with you because you're not like Jesus, friends. Amen. Come on, let's bring it into the. This, this is why your coworkers don't like you. This is why your family don't want to deal with you. People are so funny. Step outside of yourself and really just examine your life and say, man, do people like me? Why or why not? How come I'm so unpalatable to people? How come they don't want to be around me? We do not see Christ and speak to him. We don't see him and speak to him. But the Holy Spirit dwells in us. Come on, friends. While we don't see Christ physically, while we don't speak to him physically, face to face, person to person, through the Holy Ghost, though, he dwells in us. The Spirit works in and through everyone who receives Jesus, friends. The Holy Ghost is power to live the new life. The Holy Ghost gives the sinner power to live the new life. Power, power to have victory over sin. Did you hear what I said, friends? The, receiving the Holy Ghost is vital to your salvation. Mm-hmm. Vital to your salvation. If you don't receive the indwelling of the Holy Ghost, then you have no power to live apart from sin. You have no power to be kind. You have no power to be loving. You have no power to be forgiving. Come on. You have no power to be humble, to be meek, to be lowly. You have no power without the indwelling of the Holy Ghost. Period, friends. Without the whole indwelling of the Holy Ghost, you have no power. Mm. Those who know the indwelling of the Spirit reveal it by the fruit of the Spirit. Galatians 5, those who are filled with the Spirit have love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, and faith. Those who are filled with the Holy Ghost, their experience is filled with love, joy, peace, long-suffering, patience, gentleness, goodness, and faith. There are only two spirits in the world, friends. Either you are being actuated by the Spirit of Christ, the Spirit of God, the Holy Ghost, or you're being actuated by the Spirit of Satan. There ain't no gray. There ain't no in-between. You know what I'm talking about. That argument you get into with a family member, a spouse, and you know how you spoke like the dragon, you were nasty and mean, how you treat your children sometimes, how you're abusive, and then you might hop online and want to pontificate. Your religion, your faith, your truth goes no further than how you treat the people who like you the least. Your religion goes no further than how you treat those who are less than you in your, in, in your sermation. Huh? <sighs> Many of us think we know the truth intellectually, but we don't possess the truth in practice. Hmm. The person who is filled with the Holy Ghost is modest is temperate in all things and guards their words. The persons that are filled with the Holy Ghost are modest in their dress, modest in their deportment, modest in how they carry themselves. They are temperate in all things and they guard their words. They guard their lips. They just don't speak every evil, foolish thing. They're not rash to speak. They're slow to speak. They consider their words before they speak. Our mouths betray us. We run around looking like fools and we don't even know it. It's like that king who was naked and he thought he had invisible clothing on. Christ is represented by the Holy Spirit. Last 
thing I want to tell you there. Christ is represented by the Holy Spirit. Friends, I'm going to show you something over in Mark chapter 5. By looking at the counterfeit, we're going to unpack something true about the Spirit of God. We're going to look at the, we're going to examine the counterfeit, and it's going to reveal to us some deep truth about the Spirit of God. In Mark chapter 5, verse 15. Mark chapter 5, verse 15, I find these words. We find these words in the Bible. And they come to Jesus and see him that was possessed with the devil. Singular. And had the legion in him. That's three to five thousand or Roman foot soldiers sitting and clothed in his right mind. And they were afraid. Jesus cast a legion out of a man. Two men, three to five thousand fallen angels in this man. These men. He said he had a devil devil, singular, but it was a legion. Go down to verse 9. Mark, jump up to verse 9. Mark 5, verse 9. And he asked him, Jesus asked him what his name was. Jesus knew his name, friends. Jesus asked the demoniac his name for you and me so that we could learn something. So that we could learn something. What is thy name? And he answered saying, my name, singular, my name is Legion, for we are many. Come on, friends. This is the counterfeit of God. Satan counterfeits God. There was one man possessed with a devil that said, My name is Legion, for we are many. Hebrews 1 verse 14 tells us that angels are spirits. So fallen angels are fallen spirits. Hebrews chapter 1, verse 14. Are they not all ministering spirits? Come on, put it together, friends. Fallen angels, angels are ministering spirits called to minister unto us. The fallen angels are doing the opposite work. They are ministering to us, all right? They're ministering evil to us, satanicness. So a, a fallen angel, an angel is a spirit. Now here's this man, possess devil, singular, but many spirits possessed him. You and I are supposed to be possessed by the Spirit, by the one and true living God, singular, who is three persons. Satan counterfeits the true. You and I are supposed to be possessed with the Spirit of God, supposed to be possessed by God, which is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. One, but yet many. One, but yet three. Satan sees this, and he comes with the counterfeit. Ah, I'm going to send one, oh, a legion. Come on, friends. Come on, friends. First John chapter three. First, Don, First John chapter three as we close. First John chapter three, verse 22. First John chapter three, verse 22, the counterfeiter. Hmm? And whatsoever we ask, whatsoever the believer asks, the Christian, whatsoever we ask, we receive of him because we believe only, because we simply believe. No, friends. My Bible says, and whatsoever we ask, we receive of him because we keep his commandments and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. Sex outside of marriage is not pleasing in his sight. Secular music, speaking about fornication, murder, evil, killing is not pleasing in his sight. Marvel movies, not pleasing in his sight. Hmm? Anime, not pleasing in his sight. Sleeping around, cheating on your spouse, not pleasing in his sight. Being married to one per more than one person, not pleasing in his sight. Lying, cheating, stealing, 
being nasty and mean online, not pleasing it. Listen, he hears those and whosoever ask, whatsoever we ask, we receive of him because we keep his commandments and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. And this is his commandment that we should believe on the name of his son, Yeshua, Jesus, the Christ, Joshua. And love one another. <laughs> you must love one another, friends. It's a command of God that we love one another. Some of us think our brothers and sisters are, are dictated by blood and race or ethnicity. There's only one race, the human race, friends. We're all brothers and sisters in Christ. In Adam. In Adam. Thank you, guys. Who sent me the galaxy? Thank you so much. I appreciate that. We're all one in Christ. Okay? Positive vibes. I see you. Thank you so much <laughs> for that galaxy. Um, we're all one in Christ. So when we're talking about, some of us think that, oh, my brother or my sister is someone who looks like me. No, no, no. My brother and my sister are those who do the will of my Father, which are in heaven. My brother and my sister is those who actually do good to me. The good Samaritan was the Jewish man brother, was his neighbor. That's who his neighbor was. Was it because they had the same texture of hair? Was it because they were the same faith? No, 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 no. His, his, his brethren that believed like him. Let me tell you something, friends. You know what's funny? Let me say something to my, to my atheist friends out there. You know what might happen to you, friends? Another atheist may leave and forsake you, and it'll be a Christian that may come to your aid and save your life. We need to wake up, friends. We need to wake up. This is what happens when we don't believe in absolute truth. We're turned in every wrong direction possible. Love does not envy. Love is not proud. Love is not boastful. Love is patient. Love is kind. It is tender. Love does not Envy does not hate other people, friends. Hmm. Anyone who believes that we don't need God is a fool. They're blind. To say we don't need, don't need God means is to say that we don't need love. How many atrocities and evil have been done in the name of God devoid of love? And this is his commandment, that we should believe in the name of his son, Yahshua, Jesus, Christ, and love one another as he has given us, as he gave us commandment. Verse 24, and he that keepeth his commandments dwelleth in him. And he that keepeth his commandments dwell in God, dwell in Christ. And Christ dwells in him, and God dwells in him. And hereby we know that he abideth in us by the spirit which he hath given us. Friends, if we want to abide in the love of God, we must abide in, in, in keeping the commandments, friends, because the commandments are love. This is the evidence that the Holy Ghost is working in you, that you're, come on, it's dwelling in you. <sighs> Michael, thank you so much for the galaxy this morning. Appreciate you, my brother. Our last question this morning. How do we receive the indwelling of the Holy Ghost? How do we receive the indwelling of the Holy Ghost, friends? Come on, without him we are nothing. Come on, Stephanie. Luke chapter 11, verse 13. Our last verse this morning. Luke chapter 11 and verse 13. Come on, Red. I see you, Red. I see you read. If ye then being evil know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your heavenly father, when you pray, you say father, friends. You don't have to go back to any original language. Jesus said, when you pray, when asked how to pray, you say our father who art in heaven, Abba, daddy, father. That's it, you address God as father. If you being evil know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more so your heavenly father? Oh, give the Holy Spirit to them that ask him. 
How are we supposed to ask, friends? How do you ask? In faith. Ask in faith, meaning believe you have received the indwelling of the Holy Ghost, even if you don't feel it. Mm -hmm. Even if you don't feel it, friends. Everything we've learned and read this morning, there was no indication that the Holy Ghost makes a person roll around on the floor. That it makes a, a person speak an unknown language and babble. Makes anybody laugh uncontrollably or become naked or lose self-control. We didn't read that anywhere this morning, friends. Not in one verse, not in one passage. We looked at the work of the Holy Ghost, and now, friends, we must ask in faith. So when you get on your knees and you say, Lord, I'm asking for the end of the Holy Ghost. I'm asking to be convicted of sin, righteousness, and judgment. When you pray for the Holy Ghost, that's what, that is what you're asking for, to be convicted of sin in your own life, your need of righteousness, and the reality that you are living in the judgment hour, friends. You might die tonight. Listen, beloved. You might die tonight. My wife. I was married almost, come on, 20 years. My wife passed away of cancer, friends. Breast cancer. It moved to her lungs. This March will make three years. She was 37 years old. 37 years old, friends. We don't have no time to play with God. We don't have no time to play with your eternity, friends. Folks are going down to Christless graves every day, being hard-headed and stiff-necked. Let go of this world, friends, and grab a hold of Jesus' righteousness. Today is the day of salvation. You don't know how, listen, it doesn't, doesn't matter what you believe, we all leave here. It doesn't matter if you're rich or you're poor, you're going to the grave. Atheist believer, going to the grave. Fool, intelligent man, idiot, going to the grave. The thief, the, 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 the robber, the honest man, they both go to the grave. They both go to the grave, friends. The Republican, the Democrat, go to the grave. The heterosexual, the homosexual, go to the grave. We better wake up, beloved. The real question is, what happens when you die? Is there a resurrection? Is there a God in heaven? Is there life eternal? This is the question. By God's grace, I saw my wife transform before my eyes, and she went down to a grave covered in the blood of Jesus. And I told her, I'll see you in the morning. I'll see you resurrection morning, friends. Some of us have lost people we love, beloved. And let's just be honest. It ain't right. It ain't fair. Don't make sense. Because we, we, we are adverse to death because God has put an eternity in the hearts of men. It doesn't make sense, friends. Death doesn't make sense. So when you see a person take their last breath, when you see the spirit of God leave a person, the breath of life leave a person, your mind breaks down. He goes, what is this thing that I'm observing? The day you eat thereof, you shall surely die. The Bible has never lied to us one time, friends. But glory and thanks be to God who, who so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son that whosoever, whosoever believeth in him should not perish. It says perish, not be tortured forever. It says not perish, but have eternal life, beloved. I set before you life and death. Oh, please choose life, friend. This morning, God has set me for you life and death. Please choose life. And you can live that path, go to that narrow, strict gate, and live that life and discipline to God by asking for the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. Mm. By asking for the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. Friends, if you're hearing the voice of God this morning, I wanna pray for you. I wanna pray for you. If you're here for the first time this morning, give me a one in the chat. 
If this is your first time here to go stand and preach live, put a one in the chat for me. I'm going to pray for the saints this morning. Because we want the victory. We want the indwelling of the Holy Ghost. Praise the Lord. Father, we want to especially lift up. Oh, we're going to lift up. Come on. Poetry in motion. David this morning. Lenny. Erica. Sharon. Yvette. Suze. Susie. Joelle. Tammy. Come on. Minnie. Carolyn. Mindy. Tick. Ja. Come on. J <sighs> Carolyn Wilson. Christel. Good to see you this morning. 777. Let's pray. I'm going to pray with you. Amen. Heavenly Father, I thank you for all the returning members of Go Stand and Preach that are here morning by morning, Monday through Friday. And I want to pray that a blessing upon them and that the indwelling of the Holy Ghost would be given them as they turn from their sins, as they surrender to the convicting influence of the Spirit of God. We want to lift up all those who are here for the first time this morning, Lord. I don't know where they are in their life. I don't know where they are in their walk with you. I don't know what trials or tribulations they're going through, but I know they have some. And Father, I pray that they would find rest in you, that they would find peace in you, that they would find comfort in you, that they would find rest and comfort in the truth. For you said the truth shall set them free, will set us free. So Father, I want to pray for them that you would finish the work you've begun in them. Wherever you, you're, you're leading them, Father, there's no coincidences in life. You've brought them by the channel this morning, and I pray, Lord, that you would, they would see that you are working to finish the work you've begun in them, and that they would surrender to the process. Father, forgive us all of our sins. As a collective, we are asking for the indwelling of the Holy Ghost, that we might go on to live the sanctified life. And Father, we don't need to feel this. We take you at your word. You're not a God that can lie or should lie or a man that should lie or can lie or will lie. You're God who does not lie. And if you said all we have to do is ask in faith and he will be given us, then we ask this morning and we believe this morning in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Friends, let us go on to live the victorious life tonight at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We're back here live on TikTok to answer your questions. That's when I actually sit down and I take questions. You can call in. We'll get you on the system. This is what we're going to do when uh, tonight at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, friends. I pray that we will invite the Holy Ghost into our lives, into our experiences. That, it will, that we will allow the Holy Ghost to, to, to soften our rough edges, to grant us peace and understanding. Friends, thank you for supporting this ministry in the ways that you do with the gifts this morning. Thank you, Tammy, this morning. Thank you, Coco, this morning. Thank you, Sean, Nene, thank you. Rob, thank you. Sister Fields, thank you. Michael, thank you. Positive Vibes, thank you. Sarah, thank you. So many gifts this morning. Thank you so much. I pray that you have received a blessing that we delve into the word of God, looking into the Holy Spirit and his purpose. In the mornings, Monday through Friday, we meet at 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, Monday through Friday. 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, Monday through Friday. Follow us. Go stand and preach all platforms. There's a fake account out there pretending to be us, me, do not give them any money, friends. You can do so at gostandandpreach.org if you would like to support this ministry. Or you can buy t-shirts and merch. Link in the TikTok bio. You can do that. Or you can give gifts here on TikTok Live. But don't support this fake ministry out there that's trying to take from, take from the work and word of God. We do this full time. I do this full time for Jesus, beloved. I go stand and preach for Jesus full time. I am a digital and in-person evangelist. Go stand and preach over at YouTube. Have a relationship podcast called No Pills, streaming on all platforms. YouTube, Apple Music, Apple Podcasts, Spotify. We are here to bring practical truth about the Bible to the saints. I want you to have a healthy marriage. I want you to be in a relationship where you're being courted, where someone wants to marry you. You're a wife, not a booty call, friends. Amen? Come on, sisters. Men, don't, you don't give yourself away either. One man, one wife. 
Friends, when you share this and give this to other people, it works out better. Friends, are we tired of having our hearts broken? Are we tired of living our lives our own way? Hmm? Are we tired? Are we tired of trying to be in control and it's just not working out? <sighs> you can't improve on God, friends. His ways are perfect. I want God to be in the midst of the fire with me. I don't want to go through a storm alone. I don't want to go through my ups and downs alone. I want God to be right there with me. He promised, listen, I am filled with the Holy Ghost by God's grace, by faith. And he says the comforter will never leave nor forsake me. Amen. Don't, don't do this life alone, friends. Don't do this life without God. I'm so happy you were all here Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. We'll be back tomorrow morning. Tonight, 7 p.m., come back. I want to hear from you. If you have questions about the Bible that you would like answered from the Bible, set the reminder, hit the notification bell. Come back tonight at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Call in. Let me hear from you. Let me see what's going on. I love you. So happy you were here. I pray the Word of God is doing what it's supposed to do in your life and in your heart and in your mind. Maranatha, are you ready? I know. It's not a trend. It's the truth.